If there's something strange in the neighborhood, well, with all due respect to the Ghostbusters, if I'm being attacked by a spook, specter, ghost, or a free-floating, full-torso, vaporous apparition, I'm not calling for graduate school dropouts. No, I'm either dialing up the Winchester brothers, or I'm gassing up the mystery machine. Scooby and the gang. These guys, they're our freaking role models, man. Except Brett, he's a wad. Today it's Scooby-Doo vs. Supernatural for the crown of the all-time best battlers of the bellowing blights. Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, and the gang have been a worldwide institution for generations of fans. Meanwhile, Sam and Dean Winchester have cultivated an impressive 15-year run thanks to a legion of die-hard supporters. Whether the enemy du jour is ghosts, werewolves, or Mr. Withers, who runs the old amusement park, these two teams of lovable underdogs always get the job done. But what happens when they face off against each other? Zoids! Here's how we'll determine a winner. Round one, tomato meter. Round two, popularity. Round three, characters. And then we'll do a wild card round to settle the score once and for all. I'll then say goodnight, then it's up to you, the home viewer, to cast your vote. The mystery gang is taking on the Winchester family, and a whole box of Scooby Snacks are on the line. I once ate a milk boat on a dare. Let's get it on. The most beautiful words in the world. All you can eat. Clear eyes and a clogged arteries. Can't lose. Round one, tomato meter. Everyone and their mother and their grandmother and their great-grandma's ghost has heard of Scooby-Doo, and Supernatural has enough hardcore fans to populate an entire country, but how do the critics feel about these celebrated franchises? Pull my finger. Uh-oh, too late. Okay, Winchesters, y'all want to take a crack at this one first? The boys and their gaggle of relatives, friends, and spooky enemies appear to be BFFs with a tomato meter. Whether you've never heard of Supernatural or you're a hardcore fan, you're going to need to brace yourself because the show has an overall average of 93%. What? And that's not like out of a thousand, that's out of a hundred. That's an A average, kids. The show's lowest season was scored at 63%, which is still fresh, and the show can boast multiple perfect seasons at 100%, including its currently ongoing 15th season. Wait, so the current season is still perfect? <laughs> okay, nobody talked to it in the dugout. Leave it alone, do not jinx this. We got work to do. You may be saying to yourself, okay, Mark, you handsome hunk of granite, 93% is good, but Scooby-Doo is beloved, right? Well, not necessarily by the critics. So we don't have tomato meter scores for the original CBS or ABC runs of the show, but we do have them for the more recent live action and animated features, and it only averages 50%. 50%? In what twisted world could you possibly rate a ghost fighting dog rotten? Despite sizable box office success, it appears the live action films starring Matthew Willard, Linda Carnellini, Sarah Michelle Gellar, and my close personal friend, Freddie Prince Jr., are considered rotten. They average just 26%. However, a handful of the animated films are fresh, with Scooby Doo on Zombie Island taking the top franchise score at 86%. And that movie came out like a decade before The Walking Dead, so Scooby, you were ahead of the curve. You hear the screeching of an owl, you hear the wind begins. So despite the Mystery Gang's good looks and sense of humor, it's the other sect of funny hunks that's going to take round number one. Supernatural has a good enough tomato meter score to get into an Ivy League school, and that's why it's going up one nothing on Scooby. <laughs> round two, popularity. To all the kids out there watching, being popular, it's not a big deal. Follow your own path, march to the beat of your own drummer. Unless, of course, you're trying to win a round of this show, <laughs> then being cool and lovable really helps. Keeping it real. I mentioned the mystery team's foibles as it pertains to critics on the tomato meter, but Scooby does rebound when it comes to the audience score. Him and the gang make it into fresh territory, barely at 62%. However, Supernatural continues its sterling, fresh record with a healthy B average of 86%. And according to the audience, between seasons 3 and 5 of the show, Supernatural enjoyed a 3-year high of 95%. Meanwhile, the two series What's New Scooby-Doo and Scooby and Shaggy Get a Clue each have a perfect 100%. Although 2018's Daphne and Velma only garnered 37%. Why is that so low? I like Daphne and Velma. Did Scrappy-Doo show up and ruin it? More on him in the next round. Ugh. People adore me! Popularity can also be determined by a question as simple as, does anyone watch your show? 
Sam, Dean, and the gang certainly have solid ratings that strengthen their case. For the first 14 seasons of Supernatural, it averaged 2.35 million viewers per episode. And that's all the more impressive considering it originally aired on the CW and not one of the major networks. Fans were on board with the brothers from the start as season one set a show record of 3.81 million viewers per week. However, many more fans, like yours truly, didn't really discover the greatness of Supernatural until it was available on streaming platforms like Netflix. As a matter of fact, I think the first time I saw it, I had a DVD mailed to me by Netflix. <laughs> I miss the medieval times. For one chance! It's not the speech from... See what I want he knows. Scooby-Doo obviously goes way further back into human and dog history. The show debuted in 1969 and has been in the public consciousness ever since. And even though the ratings for all the various incarnations of Scooby are murky at best, I can report that in 1969, 65% of households were tuned into CBS on Saturday morning where it originally aired. That's going to sell a lot of anison and talcum powder. Scooby does have the advantage of having been on the big screen, churning out two live action hits early on in this millennium. Scooby-Doo and its sequel, Monsters Unleashed, combined for an impressive $384 million domestically and $740 million worldwide. Apparently, people love dogs and their stoned owners. Furthering the case for the Mystery Machine is the Cartoon Network phenomenon. Check this. Scooby-Doo The Mystery Begins premiered in 2009 and broke virtually every record that channel had. It got 6 million viewers. Then the next year, its follow-up, Curse of the Lake Monster, garnered 5 million views. Both were good for the number one telecast of the year on Cartoon Network. Sure, it's a bit of a lopsided battle having a TV show battle another TV show that also has movies, but maybe there's a reason Scooby got to be on the silver screen in the first place. But before I give up on the Winchesters in this round, let's see how many episodes they've made. Uh, wow, really? 327 Supernatural shows will have been made by the end of the run. I've never done 327 of anything in my life. Well, that one thing. Dude, were you on my computer? Other than that. But look, Scooby-Doo can even top that gaudy number because his gang has 376 episodes over 16 different shows, 5 animated TV films, 2 theatrically released movies, 42 animated direct-to-DVD films, 6 direct-to-DVD specials, 3 direct-to-DVD live-action movies, 35 web shorts, 537 comic book issues. <sighs> okay, we get the point. Scooby's popular, and he gets a snack because his squad wins round number two. Scooby? Scooby? Go! Round three, characters. So many legendary star characters and role players to consider here. I might need more time to think. I don't know, gang. Sounds like this could be the start of a mystery. Okay, so where do we begin? Let's get the core starters involved first. Sam, Dean, you guys are up. Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles have the kind of chemistry that scientists in lab coats crave. They play off each other so well, even when they're having fun introducing themselves under any of their myriad pseudonyms. I'm Dean Winchester. I'm looking for the devil's son. This badge is fake. They've even used fake monikers referencing Van Halen and Metallica, so you know that's an easy early point for Supernatural in this round. Whether it's their powerful bro hugs, their willingness to sacrifice themselves for each other, or just karaoke perfection, Straightening the curve. Sam and Dean make for amazingly sturdy anchors of the show. I want it! Want it! But Scooby-Doo and Shaggy are icons. They debuted in the Summer of Love, and audiences over the world have been swooned ever since. Scooby's plucky optimism meshes so well with Shaggy's fearful reluctance, and the two always meet in the middle with their common love of food. <laughs> but let's not forget the other trio who've spent decades in the hallowed mystery machine, Fred, Velma, and Daphne. Fred takes his role of being a nerdy do-gooder dressed like a preppy frat boy in stride, and he loves splitting up. It's like his favorite pastime. Daphne and Velma lend their unique abilities as amateur detectives, and all told, the gang has rounded up a grand total of 392 villains. Yeah, I counted. I, I have that kind of free time these days. Supernatural has also had a blast introducing characters who expanded from becoming mere role players into regularly occurring cast members. How about Castiel's entrance in season four? Hey. Ass butt. Mary Winchester and John Winchester also factored prominently, and the show was further bolstered by memorable turns from famous people like Felicia Day and Sterling K. Brown. Then you have the characters that surround the mystery gang. <sighs> okay, here's the good news first. Memorable cameos have been a staple of Scooby-Doo since the beginning. 
everyone from the monkeys to Mama Cass to the Harlem Globetrotters have enjoyed the company of Scooby and Norville. Did you know that was, that was Shaggy's real name, was, uh, was Norville? I'd probably go by Shaggy too. But look, I can't let the mystery gang off the hook that easy. There's an elephant in the room, and it's Scooby's nephew. Scrappy Dappy Doo! Uh, to put it gently, not well liked. I myself have a confounding relationship with Scrappy, because as a kid, I thought he was great. He was maybe my favorite character on the show. And then, you know, I became an adult. And the thing is, seeing Scooby Doo as an adult, I watched the show, and I was saying, Scrappy is the most annoying character I've ever seen in my life. It's hard to make me not like a dog. It's like Scrappy-Doo and what other hated dog is there ever? I was even cool with Poochie from The Simpsons. The Taco Bell Chihuahua? Sure. Scrappy-Doo? No, thank you. There was also a Scooby-Dum and a Dooby-Doo, which um, I'm pretty sure Shaggy tried to smoke. Overall, it's a tough call here, but there's no contest in terms of role players. Supernatural has solid contributors coming off the bench every season, and they never had a scrappy do. I'm trying to think of any other dog that I disliked. Even the replacement Brian on Family Guy at least had a funny line here or there. But if we're looking at a truly iconic core cast, you can't ignore the staying power of Fred, Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and of course, Scooby. They're underrated as detectives, and even if they aren't as cool as Sam and Dean, they're endlessly entertaining to watch. In the tightest round yet, I'm going to give the win to Scooby and the gang, and they're up 2-1. to one. This is how we solve the mystery. Bye. Wild card round. Villains. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Mark, don't villains just count as characters? Technically, yes, but the big baddies are such an integral part of both shows that they deserve their own category. <gasps> that was scary. The name of the show Supernatural says it all. You got your classic ghosts and ghouls, vampires, werewolves, but there's also really freaky stuff that I'm glad I never heard of when I was a child. How about the darkness? No, this is not the thing called love. In fact, it's the older sister of God. Yeah, of God. And she ain't happy her little bro gets all the credit. You got the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Leviathans, Dijins, who I actually had heard of thanks to Magic the Gathering. What's really cool about each villain that they take on is the backstory that we get. The nod to mythology is one of the most intriguing aspects of Supernatural. You get the Siren or the Krakata, which mimics human voices to draw in its prey. And this isn't to mention all the other demons, you got your changelings, you got your hellhounds. The Winchesters have had to deal with these things on a regular basis. Listen, Velma, this isn't the Scooby gang. So how does Scooby-Doo answer? Well, look, you may think Scooby-Doo is just a kid-friendly show, but listen to this roster of baddies. Ape Man, Viking Ghost, No-Face Zombie, Phantom Virus. Hey, that's topical. And you also had your sillier variety like Catman, Ghost Clown, the Loch Ness Monster, which actually turned out to be a vehicle. Eh. The big obstacle the Mystery Gang faces in this round is the lack of a recurring threat. Supernatural had some all-time baddies coming back for more. Crowley vacillated between villain and anti-hero, but was always a captivating watch. And Lilith eventually reached her goal of destroying the 66 locks, keeping Lucifer at bay. And Lucifer himself, well, as you might imagine, he tortured poor Sam so much he had to go to the psych ward. The only real counter Scooby has in this round is if we, the audience, can consider... Scrappy do a villain. I think a lot of people out there would. He's certainly a show ruiner, but he did try his best. Okay, fine, Scrappy. You're not a villain, but you're just super annoying. The reason I respect both squads of demon deflecting detectives is their continued ability to take on cases no one else would. Most humans and or canines would be too afraid to battle any of these creatures, and that's only if they even believed in them at all. I'm gonna go stop the big bad wolf, which is the weirdest thing I've ever said. The Mystery Gang and the Winchesters had the faith to fight the scariest things on Earth or elsewhere. The big difference is that Scooby's team usually found out the big scary thing they were facing was just some old town kook. Some older fellow who didn't like the last meal government cheese the city served him, and so he decided to get revenge, and he would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Hey, we're not kids! The meddlesome kids named Sam and Dean, on the other hand, they fought the scariest actual villains imaginable, and that's why they get the win in the wild card round. The Winchesters take it, and it's all tied up at two. You know what? You're awesome. 
And now we're at the point in the show where I, your fearless host, has to render a verdict and break this tie. But first, did you know about the legendary crossoverish episode of Supernatural that involves Scooby doing his team? Ah, you're, you're a cartoon! cartoon. I'm a cartoon. They called it the Scooby Natural episode, and one of the many highlights is that we get to see sort of a showdown between two celebrated vehicles. So the Winchesters, they have their 67 Chevelle, it's a classic, and if you're a gearhead, you know that thing can pack some serious punch. But it actually gets outran by the mystery machine in that episode. So maybe the van was powered by unwavering optimism or a nitrous oxide boost, but it did win the race. So is that enough to give Scooby-Doo the win today? Okay, look, both teams deserve our respect. They've outlasted countless witches and ghosts and the most ridiculous monsters you could think of, and they managed to entertain us consistently in the process. They're both titans of the world of the supernatural, but only one can be called truly iconic. Scooby-Doo and his pals have been crushing the game for more than 50 years, and they've entertained us all from the time we were wee little tykes all the way through our adult years. In a recent survey, Ranker listed Scooby-Doo as the number one greatest cartoon character in history. Now, I'm a fan of Sam and Dean, but could they have taken down the likes of Bugs Bunny or Homer Simpson? I don't think so. I think even hardcore defenders of Supernatural will admit that we all owe a tip of the cap or a tug of the ascot to the mystery gang. Take a bullet for that dog. Without them, generations of kids may never have gotten as invested in supernatural lore, and who knows if any of these other shows or movies that we take for granted today would have gotten made. Hey, did you believe me when I said I thought we could win this thing? No. Hold the phone. Jeepers. Jinkies. Zoinks. Okay, so Scooby-Doo gets the win, but that's just our opinion. Now it's your turn. Head to the comments right now and vote for who you think is the best supernatural poltergeist babblers of all time. Okay, we're going to say goodnight to everybody. Um, keep wearing those ascots. <laughs> Somebody wants a Scooby snack. <laughs> and we'll see you next time here on the show. Like, zoinks, Scoob!